Pixels are the building blocks of computer graphics, and the discipline itself is all about placing them in sensible ways. So, making a pixel light up on the screen should be easy, right? And indeed, in high-level programming you can just use a library method that will do the job. Under the hood, however, there is a complex system of multiple layers of software abstractions and hardware that work together to make the physical pixel on the screen light up. I find it quite fascinating, so let's talk about it. Warning. This video contains flashing lights. If that affects you, it's best to listen without watching. Cathode ray tube or CRT displays are pretty much extinct by now, but their legacy in computer graphics is very much alive. A CRT works by projecting a thin beam of electrons onto a phosphor-coated screen. The spot where the beam hits lights up. Electromagnets, called deflector coils, can deflect the beam, moving the spot of the light around the screen. By precisely timing the oscillation of the power to the deflector coils, the movement of the beam can be organized into a repeating pattern where it moves line by line from top to bottom. This pattern is called a raster pattern. Now, by timing the intensity of the beam itself, it's possible to create a consistent image drawn by light. Only a single spot of light is present on the screen at a time, but thanks to the effect of persistence of vision and the fact that it takes a few milliseconds for the phosphor to go out, it appears as the full image if the pattern is repeated frequently enough. The raster pattern can be standardized, so the one thing needed to create a sensible image on the screen is the signal that will control the intensity of the beam. The signal can be generated by a video camera and broadcasted over radio waves. This is essentially how television worked back in the day. And of course, such a signal can be generated by a fast enough computer. If you were to program such a computer to place a single pixel on the screen, it would not be a question of where to place it, but rather when to place it. Such a computer should be able to time precisely when to change the intensity of the beam for the pixel to appear at the right place on the screen. In ancient times, that's what programmers had to deal with to get something sensible on the screen. For example, check out the 8-bit channel for some insights of how programming graphics for Atari 2600 worked. Luckily, computers eventually got better. The increase in the amount of available memory made it possible to store the entire image of the screen in it. This kind of block of memory is called a frame buffer. A dedicated device, video card, could read this data and generate a well-timed signal for the monitor to properly display the image. Fast forward to the 1990s, and computer graphics, especially 3D graphics, became more and more important in home computing. And video cards evolved to react to that. Now these devices are not only there to translate digital data into a display signal, but also to render triangles. Yes. These devices, that we know as graphics processing units GPUs, are basically machines that rasterize triangles very efficiently. Triangles are the building blocks of 3D graphics. They are ideal because they are the simplest 2D shape, and crucially, a 3D triangle projected onto a 2D plane is always still a triangle. GPUs completely changed how computer graphics are programmed. Instead of filling frame buffers directly, you now tell the GPU which triangles to render and how to render them. The GPU takes care of converting these triangles into pixels in the frame buffer. So let's say we want to write an application for a modern operating system that outputs some arbitrary pixels to the screen. Assuming no library exists for that, here's what a programmer would have to deal with. First, we would establish communication with the GPU using a library like OpenGL, Vulkan or Metal on macOS. Now, we can ask the GPU to render a rectangle made of two triangles using the pixels we want to display. We need to provide a few things. The geometry of the triangles to render, vertices and edges of both triangles. Pixels that we want to put on the screen. A tiny program that the GPU will execute every time it needs to figure out what color to use for the pixel to write to the frame buffer. This program is called Fragment Shader, or sometimes Pixel Shader. It will tell the GPU to use pixels from the data provided. This should be enough to see the pixels on the screen. But that's still not the whole story. In a modern multitasking operating system with a graphical user interface, multiple applications may want to put some graphics on the screen and the desktop environment itself may want to add some decorations and UI elements on top of them. If all of this would try to render graphics to the same frame buffer, it wouldn't really work. So instead, applications render their graphics to dedicated off-screen buffers first. Then, the component of the operating system's desktop environment, that is usually called Compositor, combines these buffers into the final frame buffer, taking into account positioning of the windows, overlaps, decorations, and additional UI elements. 
Finally, the GPU sends the frame buffer to the display. Modern displays use digital signals, but the concept remains the same, one pixel at a time, following the raster pattern, just like CRTs did. I find it quite fascinating how this basic and seemingly simple computer graphics task takes such a complex pipeline of software and hardware. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. If you find computer graphics and programming in general as exciting as I do, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a like. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.